Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about misinterpreted statistics. And now, that's not just uh, statistics like from math, the stuff you slept through in school. I'm referring to uh, results from uh, experiments or uh, analyses of data and so on uh, that get reported in the mainstream media or even in trade publications and so on. There's a lot of clear misinterpretation of statistical results. Okay, so where does this misinterpretation start? Well, sometimes it starts with the researchers themselves, where they don't really quite understand the statistical tools they're using. And sometimes they'll draw conclusions that are not warranted from their data. But for the most part, that's not, not where the biggest distortions come in. The biggest distortions come at, at the two, other two stages in getting this out to the public. The first is the press, the people actually doing the reporting, the communication people, that group. And the second part is the people actually reading it. Now, the distortion for the people actually reading it is fairly obvious. It's simply that the people reading it are not trained statisticians. They're not trained in the fields. So they don't really understand what's going on. So they pretty much have to take what they're reading at face value. The problem is that the communicators often don't understand it either. And they're just parroting uh, tech jargon or something that the researchers have said, and they're not explaining any of it. Or they're taking some numbers, you know, and they'll see that number B is bigger than number A, so they'll draw some sort of conclusion from it, whether that's warranted or not. So that leads to all sorts of fun, uh, fun things that the public might end up believing that aren't necessarily true. Recently, there was a report that body-worn cameras uh, for police officers have actually increased the amount of violence against the officers. But the, the reports I read didn't consider the potential confounding factors. They just looked... More, more reports of violence, therefore more violence. But there's an obvious confounding factor there. And that is that perhaps the level of violence is the same, but it's getting reported more because there's evidence of it. How often does some sort of violent act go unreported because it's my word against yours or something like that? And there's no evidence one way or the other. And as a result of the complaint, you could end up in, tr in more trouble or less trouble. But the result is completely uncertain. If you have evidence, a camera, which is impartial, now you've got a witness, an impartial witness to what went on. It may not completely clear up the ambiguity but it will make it much clearer that an incident did occur. And that's what these particular uh, results are concerned with, that an incident occurred. Now, if better detection is just revealing more incidents that would previously have gone unreported, that's hardly an increase in violence against the police officers, is it? As a matter of fact, it's probably a beneficial result because now you know there's more going on than you thought was going on. And maybe you can start investigating the causes and see if you can figure out why it's the way it is. But as long as you just take the surface analysis that is presented saying that there's an increase in violence, you're going to be looking at the wrong things. You're going to be looking at, you're going to be taking the assumption that the cameras are increasing the violence, when in fact they almost certainly are not. 
That doesn't mean there isn't a component like where it is uh, contributing to increased violence. But, it, you know, in my opinion, it's probably more than offset by the people that are deterred by the camera being there. But it, it doesn't mean there isn't a factor there. But you need to consider that confounding if, uh, factor that you might just be detecting stuff that's already going on that you didn't know about. That's important. And that's an important thing about statistics and results from experiments and that sort of thing. You need to consider that, yes, there may be a correlation between deploying the cameras and increased counts of violence, but it doesn't mean that the cameras, the deploy, uh, that deploying the cameras caused it. As they say in certain circles, correlation is not causation. Even though causation should give you a correlation, it doesn't work the other way. Correlation does not mean there's a, that you're seeing the cause. Now, uh, some of the inaccuracies in the reporting are due to the reporters not understanding it, so they just pick something that they think makes makes a nice headline and use it. But a lot of it is deliberate these days where even if they do understand it, they'll take a particular stance on it because it's either controversial or shocking, even if it's not borne out by the study they're reporting on. And that's just down to the, let's get ratings, clickbait, to get get subscriptions that sort of thing and it's never going to go away and it's always been that way you know these uh, these publications that depend on readers need to have readers so they need people coming to look at it so stirring up a controversy or creating one is a great way to get viewers or readers So you need to, as the general public, you don't really understand what's going on, but you need to consider that you're already looking at these results through two filters. The researchers themselves, who may have added some bias to it when they reported their findings, although the scientific methods are designed to reduce that bias as much as possible, and you may have... Uh, uh, you may have a substantial bias from the reporters and editors that wrote the article you are reading. So you've got two filters already that the results have come through, and now you're adding your own, and you're adding your own biases and what you want the results to be to the mix as well. So even then, even your interpretation of what the... Uh, reporters intended to stir up could be wrong and that's uh, and that's worth keeping keeping in mind as well now there's another big problem with statistics that leads to uh, misunderstanding what they mean a lot of people think that statistics is a an accurate measure of what is going on but it's actually averages and probabilities and something you'll see in a lot of reports of statistics let's take opinion polls for uh, political races you'll see that uh, you'll, you'll see party a has 55 percent of the uh, support and party B has 45%. We'll assume that there, it's, it's a split like that. And then you'll see in the fine print, they'll put these numbers in big print, you'll see in the fine print that the poll is accurate to within plus or minus 7 percentage points 19 times out of 20. There is the rub. Now, even if they report that, and oftentimes they don't. You as a reader, you read that and you go, what does that even mean? Well, uh, 
it doesn't really mean anything except that the poll is inaccurate. <laughs> you know, that's really what it comes down to. But the idea is that whatever methodology they used to pick their sample, and a straight random sample isn't necessarily the accurate way to do it, uh, incidentally. Uh, there's a whole field of study over how to pick a sample, a representative sample. But anyway, we'll leave that aside. Uh, that's a, a, that can be used to actually bias the results as well. But uh, let's, um, let's consider. It said it's accurate to within plus or minus seven percentage points. Okay, so you have 55 to 45. Okay, that 55 number then could be 62 or 48. That 45 number could be 52 or 38. Now, you may note that though that range overlaps for the two values. So while it looks like 55 to 45 is a clear lead, that it's accurate to within seven percentage points 19 times out of 20 tells you that there isn't actually a clear lead because it could be uh, note that 50% is in both ranges it could be 50-50 or the other guy could actually lead, be leading uh, because of that, that margin for error. So you need to keep that in mind when you see a poll. Uh, so if you, if you take a look at uh, something else where you've got 70 to 30 and it's accurate within 7 percentage points 19 times out of 20, then you might be able to conclude that there's a clear leader because the error bars there, the error ranges, don't overlap. But what does that 19 times out of 20 business mean? What that means is that through some weird analytical process, they've come to the conclusion that if they ran the same survey or same poll, 20 times with the same methodology that they'll get similar results within those ranges 19 times and on the 20th time they'll get something totally out there that may be totally different. That's 5% of the time it could be wrong. So if you look at at 100 polls, all of them that have, say, 19 times out of 20, that means five of them are probably totally bogus. They're not re actually representative. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting notion, right? That statistics, like these polls, don't actually tell you anything. Uh, if you, they certainly don't tell you give you an accurate snapshot of what the actual population is thinking. And that's why you so often see poll numbers and then you have the election the next day and the result is wildly different. It's because the methodologies used for doing these polls, which are never published by the way, they never publish the questions. They never publish the selection methodology. They, they'll, they'll talk about representative samples, but they won't tell you how they arrived at a representative sample. So you have no way to gauge what, how accurate these poll results are. You just have to take their word for it that their analysis says it's accurate within X distance 19 times out of 20. And yeah. Uh, now, of course, the more polls you see from different sources that tend to agree, the more likely that they're actually converging on something approaching reality. And that's why in scientific circles, you want repeatable studies and you need multiple studies over time. And you certainly need the more of them, the better. 
And the more of them that uh, show consistent results, the better. If they're showing random results all over the place, then it probably means your conclusion is no good or your methodology is no good. So that's so that gives you some idea of why statistics are so easily misinterpreted. It's because statistics themselves are potentially totally wildly made up anyway. Uh, so the next time you see an opinion poll for an election or uh, support for uh, uh, some policy or something like that, unless it's a census where they interviewed everybody, you have that margin for error and you have a potential for significant bias, especially if they haven't shared the methodology for their uh, is for selecting their sample. And this sample selection bias is particularly bad for things like web polls because um, the people that answer those polls are not necessarily the same same people that would uh, whose opinion would actually matter, right? Uh, the self-selection uh, bias uh, it does affect the accuracy of the poll results and the fact that it relies on certain groups of people who have computers or look at these things and so on, right? As an example of a selection bias that can skew results. And that's why those opinion polls on radios and stuff, go to our site and vote in your opinion. That doesn't really give you a representative result and you can't even gauge its accuracy. You can't give a plus or minus. You can't give a 19 times out of 20 result even. Although you can talk about the uh, the population that replied and and what it it means about them, you know. Uh, but you can't talk about extrapolating that beyond the people that replied because it's not a representative sample. Or it probably isn't, and you have no way to know if it was. And then, of course, you've got your scientific studies. They'll have a study comes out and says it, it saw this particular result. That is one study. That doesn't give you a statistically significant result, necessarily. Because... You've got too many potential things went wrong. It could be that one out of 20 outlier that doesn't fit. Um, it could be. Uh, so you need to keep that in mind. Oh, yes, and something else to consider is that uh, when they're tallying results, statisticians throw out the most wacky outliers because they, they skew the numbers, right? So if you have uh, results that show wackiness, like way outside where the bulk of everything is, those are usually thrown out in the statistical analysis, the stuff way off to the left or way off to the right, when in fact those might be the critical data points. So that you need to keep in mind as well. The statistics themselves might be misinterpreting the, the data and then if you misinterpret the statistics on top of that, you just compound it. So anyway, the next time you're reading about some scientific study showing a link between this and that, take it with the grain or ten of salt that it deserves and understand that it's one study and that other studies may show different results. Other studies may show similar results, in which case the more studies that do, the more likely the result is accurate. The same thing goes for opinion polls and things like that. Uh, keep in mind that there could be a substantial bias in the methodology of conducting the poll, or in fact a scientific study, and that uh, the analysis in both could be flawed. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be wrong. And then the communication levels after that can certainly distort it even further. 
there's a pretty good reason that some person at some point, sometime said that there's uh, three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. And you can, if you are careful with what you do, you can pretty much make statistics say anything you want. And that's, that's what these media reporter types often do. Anyway, that's my ramble on the topic of statistics and misinterpretation of them. Uh, if you want to be notified of uh, future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.